Welcome to Signal and System Lecture Series. Here in this session, I'll explain you property of multiplication and convolution for Fourier transform. And to have it, first I'll give you statement and then we will solve some examples so we can understand how we can apply this property to solve Fourier transform examples easily. So let us have first statement of it. So see, for multiplication and convolution, we need to have two signals. So if we have two signals, one is f1 of t and second is f2 of t. And if Fourier transform of f1 of t, that is f1 of omega. And if Fourier transform of f2 of t, that is f2 of omega. Then multiplication property states that multiplication of two signals f1 of t into f2 of t Fourier transform that will be convolution in f1 of omega and f2 of omega. So multiplication property states multiplication of two time domain signal that will be convolution of two frequency domain signal. And convolution property states that convolution of two time domain signal Fourier transform that will be multiplication of two frequency domain signal. So convolution of two time domain will result into multiplication in frequency domain and frequency domain convolution will result into multiplication in time domain. So this is how Fourier transform is there with multiplication and convolution property. So this is very essential property. Sometimes this property will make solution of example so easy. So that's why this property is so essential. So let us have some examples so it will be more clear how this property is solving examples easily. So first I'll consider one example of question is find Fourier transform of e to the power minus a t u t convolution with e to the power minus b t u t. Now see if you observe this question then by having integration and all those things this convolution and then integration it will be extremely difficult to solve this as your calculation will get very difficult. So here one thing that we can do is we can consider e to the power minus at ut as one signal and e to the power minus bt ut as second signal and by applying convolution property we can have Fourier transform in easier way. So if I consider f1t that is equals to e to the power minus at ut and if I consider f2t as e to the power minus bt ut then Fourier transform of this e to the power minus at ut if I say it is f1 of omega then basic rule of exponential signal is what? 1 by a plus j omega in case of e to the power minus a t u t and if you take Fourier transform of f2 t so that is f2 omega and here e to the power minus b t u t is there in that case this has to be b plus j omega. So as per the basic rule of Fourier transform of f1t convolution with f2t it is f1 omega into f2 omega so we can say this convolution will be this convolution Fourier transform will be 
वन बाई ए प्लस जे ओमेगा एन टू वन बाई बी प्लस जे ओमेगा सो इट विल मेक दिस कैलकुलेशन वेरी ईजी ओवर हियर वन कैन क्लियरली सी बाय ओनली वन स्टेप वन कैन इजीली सॉल्व दिस कुरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म सो कन्वल्यूशन एंड मल्टीप्लीकेशन प्रॉपर्टी इज सो एसेंशियल लेट अस है वन मोर एग्जाम्पल सो इट विल बी मोर क्लियर सो नाउ आई एल बी giving you fourier transform of one signal and let us calculate inverse fourier transform of that so let us have example based on inverse fourier transform so question is find inverse fourier transform of 1 by a plus j omega convolution with 2 divided by j omega so this symbol indicates convolution so here we have fourier transform of two signals and convolution of that is resultant fourier transform and our agenda is to identify inverse fourier transform of this resultant signal that is time domain version of this so if you go by basic integration and all those things you will be finding this is extremely difficult so we should not go by that basic integration process we should be doing this by having convolution property so here if i consider this 1 by a plus j omega as f1 of omega That is one by a plus j omega, and if I consider f two of omega, that is two by j omega. Then, if you take inverse Fourier transform of this, then that has to be f one of t, and you'll be finding it is e to the power minus a t u t. And if you take inverse Fourier transform. of 2 by j omega then you will be finding it is f2 of t and that has to be signum function so now by using convolution property we can have original signal so what is that convolution property convolution property states that Like see inverse Fourier transform of f1 of omega convolution with f2 of omega that has to be f1 of t into f2 of t. So here we have f1 of t that is this and f2 of t that is another signal. So it will be e to the power minus a t u t into signum function of t. so this is how we can have inverse fourier transform of this signal so you can clearly observe all we can do is we can reduce calculation which is happening by having integration by using basic process so if you go for basic formula of integration minus infinite to infinite ft into e to the power minus j omega t for fourier transform for this convolution convoluted signal in that case you'll be finding it is extremely difficult but as if you use convolution property and you translate that in multiplication then you'll be finding it is easier and you can see that by this two example i have explained even one can increase complexity but when you apply this convolution and multiplication property you will be reducing complexity so ultimate agenda of multiplication and convolution properties to reduce calculation and you can have easier way of answers so that is where we use this two principles you can download all those materials which i am teaching here on my channel from my application and you can ask queries in comments definitely i'm reading all those comments from student side and in future i'll make videos which will solve all those queries which is there from student
Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do give your valuable suggestions. Definitely based on it in future I will make videos. Thank you so much.